Hi, I'm Dave Essinger, um, and this is my this is my book, Running Out. Um, it's a novel about long distance running, among other things. Um, came out from Main Street Rag Publishing Company in 2017. We put out the audiobook in 2018. Um, and I was, uh, I'm a runner myself, and I was thinking uh, I wanted to write something that, that got the sport right for, for people who run and do care about that, and also for people who have no idea why anybody would want to go run for, you know, hours and hours and hours or something. So my premise was I thought if I had a, a really, you know, top of their game endurance athlete and I stranded them in a really difficult situation to see what would happen then. Um, yeah, drama would ensue, right? Um, so I'm going to read through my first couple pages here. Running out, chapter one. A mile, two miles below, the landscape scrolled serenely by, an irregular patchwork of conifers and bare deciduous forest where the snow showed through. Occasional lakes and rivers flashed like mirrors. Dan let the vibration of the small aircraft's engine move up his legs through his feet on the floor. His elbow buzzed where it touched the window. Down there on the left, the pilot called. Last paved road in this part of Quebec. Mandatory registration to drive it. There's more moose down there than people. Dan pulled the valve on his water bottle, drank a single swallow, and snapped it closed with the palm of his hand. New gear? Deb asked idly. Dan turned his wrist, still not sure if he liked the fit of the bottle's strap over the back of his hand. Just a race giveaway, he said. It's not as nice as yours, he added without thinking. She looked away. Every little thing was a reminder. Over the last year, she'd fought her way back onto the elite circuit alone, while he trained in the opposite direction, running meaningless trail races. Her distraction now was justifiable, though, with her father's ashes in a quart-sized Ziploc bag under her seat. Dan reached to put his hand on hers. She gazed out the window, immune to consolation. Between them, Susie slept peacefully in her car seat. Half an hour passed, the roar of the engine hypnotic, and Dan marveled at the emptiness below them. Its vastness was calming, remote and removed, when seen safely from this altitude. Textbook undisturbed taiga, the pilot narrated. Bog and muskeg, scrub pine forest, birch, alder. Further north you go, the more it thins into tundra. Are you looking now and then, he asked Deb. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm, she answered, her eyes on their daughter. After a while, his eyes perceived a straight line in the landscape, and at first he doubted himself, thought he was habitually imposing signs of humanity where there were none. The pilot turned and yelled back, We'll be to your river pretty soon. I'll come in pretty low, he smirked. The small cargo door slides. Stay buckled in. Dan caught Deb's eye and nodded at her bag under her seat. It'll be time here. She looked back at him, impatient, and he held her gaze. No, he wasn't going to do this for her. Finally, she reached beneath her and withdrew the freezer bag of ashes. They looked like fine gray oatmeal with a few calcified shards of bone. Deb nodded questioningly at Susie. Neither of them had explained to her what they were doing or what was in the bag. She's sleeping, Dan murmured and turned back to the window. It won't even take you a minute. They were descending, and the line below them had grown more apparent. It disappeared in rare open snowy ground, but became clearer as a paler, partly cleared stripe when it passed through dense growth. Then he saw light flashing off parallel filaments and what looked like regular metal structures. Are those power lines, do you think? He asked Deb. What could they be powering out here? Leaning forward, he asked the pilot the same thing. He was curious, only making conversation, really. The man turned his head, cocked an expectant ear, and asked him to say it again. And just then, past the pilot's listening profile, 
Dan saw a pair of geese suddenly rising. They were huge, so close he could have counted their beating wing feathers, and he flinched involuntarily just before the prolonged rattling thud that could have been one goose or both of them striking the plane. The pilot spun around as the plane slewed sideways hard. It felt like they lost a lot of altitude fast as he cursed and fought the stick. Then, just as they leveled out, a spindly top-heavy treetop appeared out Dan's window, and the impact that immediately followed was like running over a curb in a car at 50 miles an hour. The plane lurched sickeningly. Motherfucker, the pilot yelled into the instrument panel. An alarm began buzzing. The engine over-revved, and behind it all rose the horrible roar of wind. Hold on to something, the pilot said, and Dan twisted toward the car seat, but Deb was already covering it with her body. His vision focused on her fingertips against the plastic, red under the nail, and the surrounding skin white with pressure, and Susie's bright blue eyes open in orbs of surprise. Hey, thanks. That's my first couple pages. Um, I hope you'll check out more. Thanks. <laughs>